Do you still think the Merax Finis is the best mountain bike under 200 bucks? I do. I went to, um, actually, let me tell you the pros and cons of it first. The, I'm still riding it. If you go to, I haven't upgraded to anything else yet. Where is it? If you go to cleverleverage.com, you can see the original review video. Let me just close this out. You can see the review video on the blog. This is the bike. Let me just blow it up because it looks a lot better. There we go. Um, if you see the original review video, you'll I have like the install video and all that kind of stuff. I think I bought it in. Actually, let me just pull it up. Oh no, I have a screenshot of it in there. If you go to that page and look at it, it shows when I bought it. I think I bought it in November of 15, and it is now February 11th of 2016. So I've had it for a couple months. It's still a great bike. I do think it's the best mountain bike that you're gonna get for under 200 bucks. Uh, one guy commented on one of my YouTube videos and he said that um, it was like more expensive now or something like that. I, I don't know, I don't monitor the pricing. All I know is it was a prime item with free shipping, I believe, and uh, it was 199. So it was a fucking great deal for me. The, my most favorite thing about it is this little pouch that I didn't know came with it. My keys uh, and my wallet fits on one side. My iPhone 6 fits on the other side and there's a cord or there's enough room for the cord to drape out and for me to wear earbuds that aren't wireless because I don't like the wireless ones on my head all the time. And that's awesome. I think it's supposed to go at the front, but I put it at the back so I can just reach down, turn on Pandora and go out for a ride. And um, it's really cool. It's a great size. Even one of my concealed carry guns fits, or actually the car, my, my only concealed carry, what am I saying? Um, my car can even fit in one side if I want to take my gun with me. Uh, I don't normally, but it's pretty cool. It came with a water bottle holder, all that stuff. Now, <clears throat> when you take that bitch out of the box, it's a badass looking bike, man. It looks like an $800 race bike. I keep saying that, and I've said it. Everyone that sees it, they're like, damn, you got that for 200 bucks on Amazon? I'm like, yeah. So I consider it the best... Um, I would definitely consider it the best mountain bike under 200 bucks. So to answer your question, yes. Now let me get to a couple of caveats. Um, to, if you want to buy it too, please use my affiliate link below the video or in the post. If you click on my Amazon affiliate link, I get, I think I get like 4%. So I'll make like four bucks or something like that. If you, if you, I really appreciate it if you would use my link to buy stuff because then I can buy more things to review and that pays for, you know, like these lights and making these videos and stuff like that. But, um, I want to cover a couple of the cons to the bike. Um, this is not a $1,200 hardtail. <laughs> um, I beat on it a little bit. I jumped it a little bit. Uh, I don't dare take it off of any drops or anything like that. Um, it's just not that well made. And it also doesn't have the, um, whatever you call it, it doesn't have the axles on the front fork that aren't just slided that can kind of like, if you really beat the shit out of it, that can kind of slip and come loose a little bit. It doesn't have a through and through, I can't remember what it's called. You'll know what I'm talking about though. Um, so that's one thing. The, uh, the components themselves, I mean, I guess it's like, you know, what do you expect for 200 bucks, right? But even though it has disc brakes, they really don't work that well. I had to fucking spend a lot of time to adjust them. A lot of people say that they rub and shit like that when you put it together, they do. Um, some of it is because the way that the bars and stuff were twisted up inside the box, the cables and things like that weren't adjusted correctly. So as soon as you put the wheels on, the brakes rub. So you got to sit there and adjust them a little bit. It's really not that hard to do after you do it the first time. But um, other caveat was for some reason, the fucking, the seat bolt up under the seat keeps coming loose. I mean, it's come loose like four times, I believe. And a lot of them I'm out riding. The biggest complaint there is I keep the Allen keys that came with the bike and the little wrench in the pouch, right? But for some reason, the bolt that mounts to the seat is a bigger size and it didn't come with a wrench of that size. So I had to buy one and then I keep it with me. So if it comes loose, I tighten it up. If I was smart, I'd probably get some Loctite and put it on there. I just thought of that. Why didn't I think of that before? Anyway, I'm trying to think of other cons. Pros, uh, the tires are really good. I really, really like the tires. I love the wheel, the way that the wheel, um, wheel tire and rim package looks. It looks high end. Um, other cons, um, the components just aren't like super high quality. The shifters and everything work awesome. Haven't had any trouble with the ratchet shifters. They're really good. Uh, brake levers have been awesome. The brakes, the brakes are less than stellar. I mean, I, they were really good. I thought when I first got them, but now that I tried to start doing indos and, and, um, I'm trying to catwalk for a long time and feather the rear brake and stuff like that. 
it just doesn't have that stopping power that you would get like on a $1,200 bike or um, even on like a $600 bike that comes with rubber V-brakes. Just, I don't know, they're a little bit more grabby and these are a little bit more slippery. I don't know how to explain it. But, you know, again, I, I can't complain for 200 bucks. I've been out riding so many times. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have bought a bike because I keep it on the back porch and I don't lock it up. So if somebody steals it, I'm out 200 bucks, I'm not out 1200 bucks. So I deal with the, you know, I deal with the lack of high, high end components, um, you know, for that. But the, um, what was the other thing? Uh, I think the stem, or not the stem, the stem fork combo. I think it came loose once I had to tighten it up and um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if that's normal or if maybe I beat on it a little bit too much. Um, well, ooh, the major, okay. The major problem, I have had one problem with the bike. Um, this could have been user error. When I got the bike and put it together, I started riding it and then I took it through some dirt. I never thought, and I should have, for my experience racing yet when I was younger, um, chains and gears, man, they need maintenance. You should lube them up with a dry lube that isn't sticky so that the dirt doesn't um, get attracted to the uh, bearings. But um, I, I did have one problem with the bike and I just got it fixed like a week or two ago. Uh, the problem that I had was that I never lubed the chain. I took it out, I was riding it, I put the bike together, it never occurred to me that maybe I should buy like some white lightning um, dry silicone lubricant or something like that and lube the chain up. I don't know if I would have done that if I would have had a problem with the chain, but I definitely had a serious problem with the chain and all it was was one of the links, the bearing, you could hear it, it had dirt in it and then it just stopped um, bending. So it was like, it was stuck like this. So then it, when it went through the derailleur and around the gears, it was skipping a gear because one of the links was like this. So it tried to go through there and it wasn't working at all. So it was kind of like impossible to ride. I don't know if that's my fault for not lubing anything up. I would, it's a 50-50 chance that it is. Um, the cool thing was I took it to a local bike shop, Orange Cycle, and um, the guys just took the link out and then readjusted the derailleur. So I didn't have to buy anything, which was awesome. Uh, if you do buy this bike, I would recommend the first day or two that you ride it, lube the chain to try to avoid that. I think when I took it through the dirt, cause I could hear the rest of the chain kind of, <laughs> you know, creaking with dirt in the bearings and stuff. I think that was the problem. But overall, man, it looks awesome. This is a real picture that I took riding through Winter Park. I just stopped, I'm right on the edge with a curb and I just stopped in front of a cool house that I like the, the wooden garage door on and snapped that photo. And um, I, do, I do still think it's the best mountain bike under 200 bucks. It looks way better than anything I would have gotten at like Walmart or a Target or whatever. Um, I think the performance is also better. It's lighter. I had another lady ask me on YouTube if, if it was a heavy bike. I don't really know what she meant, but it's not like one of those tank type bikes that, um, that's super heavy, like a pile of shit that you would get at Walmart or Kmart or, or Target or any place like that. It's definitely better than that. And it looks awesome. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other questions that I didn't answer. Uh, other than that, man, it's, it's been great. I love it. I ride it all the time. It's, um, I'm telling you, that pouch is absolutely awesome. I was worried because I thought it would fit the iPhone 5, and then when I, well, I didn't think the, the 6 would fit in there, so I thought I'd have to use an iPad, or iPad, Jesus, even bigger, an iPod, but the 6 fits just right in there lengthwise, and there's enough room to have the, uh, actually, I'll show you what I use. I'll show you exactly what I use. These are the earbuds that I use from Amazon. Uh... MCC or something. I don't know. I'll have to look at the, which ones I bought. But anyway, I thought there wasn't going to be room because by the time you plug this into the, the back of the iPhone and try to get it in the pouch, it's a little bit tight, but it's actually good because then it doesn't bounce around and nothing, nothing crazy happens. Everything is safe. I haven't dropped anything. It's great that I don't have to have the, my keys in my pocket. I thought I was going to have to get it under the, under the seat uh, bag for the back. But I actually like this because I can just reach straight down and grab my phone if somebody calls or I can grab my wallet if I want to stop and buy a drink or whatever. And um, I love the fact that I don't have to have my keys in my pocket. So when I'm riding, there's no constrictions. But I uh, love the bike. What I'll probably do is if I start riding any trails or um, go to Santos or anything like that to, to ride some, some hardcore mountain bike trails, if I upgrade, I'll probably buy like a Specialized or something like that, but I won't be so easy going about it. I definitely wouldn't leave it outside unlocked. I mean, this is like the best all around bike that I could get for the money. Um, I just wouldn't take it on like hardcore. I know it has disc brakes and there's a shock and all this kind of stuff, 
but I wouldn't take it on hardcore trail riding. I wouldn't try to jump it 15 feet in the air and then think you're going to come down and not break the frame or something like that. Um, it's just not that kind of, not that kind of bike. But the reason that I like it so much is because for 200 bucks, I had the option of getting a cruiser, which sucks. I had the option of getting like a hipster bike that was a fixed gear. I didn't want to do that in case I ever wanted to pull a little trailer or have like a, a rack on the back to carry a bunch of stuff. And I wanted gears. And personally, I didn't want to be as, I wanted like the meaty tires so that if I wanted to go, you know, off road or if I wanted to cut through a trail in a park or something like that, I wouldn't have those little skinny tires that you can't ride through the dirt with. And I also didn't want those smooth tires so that when it's wet out, you don't go around the corner and the fucking bike flies out from underneath you and you bust your ass because there's no tread. Like on some of those road bikes, man, I don't, I don't ever want that again. So overall, I'm super happy. I've recommended it to friends and family and um, I would recommend it to you. I think it's the best bike that you can get under 200 bucks, hands down. So I hope that helps. If you have any other questions that I can answer on it, let me know. Go to my blog at cleverleverage.com. Uh, go to the QOTW page and enter your little question in there and I'll get to it later. Thanks.